Hello and one and all and welcome to my best films of 2022. Well, happy late New Year, folks. Um, it's another year. It's 2023. Um, 2022 has been pushed aside and moved on to a new adventure. Um, some of you might have had a mixed bag on 2022 with your life. For myself, it's been pretty damn good. I I've got back to the cinema more often uh, compared to the other two years, 2020, 2021. Now we're in a safe place, although COVID um, at points is still going on. But we are completely uh, back at the cinema as far as I'm concerned anyway. It's just, I'm just so glad to be um, back at the movies. And we're back in my non-movie reviewing back. Uh, my movie review and background, I think it is pretty suitable to have at this end. Um, so, that being said, sorry about that, folks. Um, need to keep my computer awake so I can read off my list. And as always, guys, as I say every single year, guys, um, this is my list, all right? Your list is going to be different to mine, which is going to be completely understandable. I, you know, some of your favourite films um, may not be on here, whether I did not get to see them, like The Fablemans, the new Spielberg film, is still yet to come out in my area. And plus, everything, everywhere, all at once, I've been itching my ass to see every single time. Um, I have not found a physical media copy of it. Um, I cannot um, find it at the moment, but I am going to some way watch it shape or form i haven't seen every movie every single year i'm a busy person i'm not rich unfortunately i don't uh, i'm still in my parents house so you might just want to respect it otherwise you come to the wrong youtube channel so but you know let's all have fun respect each other and have a good time and not have an argument about everyone's favorite films and respect each other's opinions. It's a word for a reason. So last year I didn't do any honourable mentions. This year I am going to do some honourable mentions because this was a really good year for film. One of the best in recent memory since the previous decade. So I have some honourable mentions um, which I'll read them off one by one and they are uh, Lightyear Jackass Forever, <laughs> Jackass, uh, Chip and Dill Rescue Rangers, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Massive, massive Talent, Unbearable Weight, uh, which I did post a review, but I did a massive mistake on there, which I'm not going to get into, which is why I had to delete the video, so sorry about that. Um, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Barbarian, and last but certainly not least, which would probably be my number 11, Bullet Train. Yes, um, Bullet Train unfortunately could not make it to the list, but it is number 11 anyway, so that would have been extended anyway. So, with all that being said, guys, let's... Sorry if I keep moving my head, I can't do everything all at once. This is the best I can do. And again, you're going to have to respect it, I'm afraid. So, without any further ado, let's crack on with the 10 films that I thought were the best of 2022. So coming at number 10 um, is a film that unfortunately could not be re-released in cinemas, which was a crime because Prey was such a good time. I absolutely love um, Prey from uh, start to finish. Um, you know, it is without a doubt the best Predator sequel, even though it's a prequel. Um, it is completely original, you know, it doesn't rehash anything, just like with the first, with, on, from the first film. Uh, Predator 2, which I do still uh, like. Um, if you've seen my review, you know what I think of that movie. Um, and if you want to hear more thoughts, check out my review. And as I say, guys, this is going to be a fire session. Um, I'm not going to consider this like a ranking list. This is just my favourite films, you know, so... Um, and there could be films on here that I haven't reviewed, well, I didn't have time to. But nonetheless, 
you are, you are going to see that on here anyway. So number 10 is Prey. Um, check it out on Disney Plus if you're in the UK or anywhere else internationally. It is what it is. So coming at number 9, uh, we have a horror movie which um, felt more of a thriller in some aspect. Nope. Nope is very, very good. Um, I'm not too sure if I like it as much as the previous two, Get Out or Us. But Nope, none of the less, was a very, very good um, thriller movie. Um, which didn't really feel like a horror movie at all. Like, Jordan Peele has yet to make a bad movie regards to being on the director's chair. Like, he really um, made such a thrill ride. And just, it's a great movie, and if you've not seen, no, definitely check it out. Coming at number eight, um, sorry if I'm rushing through this, this is my thinking. Gonna have to deal with it. Um, coming at number uh, eight, um, excuse me, um, is what in my opinion is the best animated film of the year, which is a Netflix film, and that is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Yes, I loved Pinocchio. This was um, such a great uh, different um, telling of Pinocchio rather than just um, doing a Disney remake. Which I haven't watched, but probably will not anytime soon. But eventually, possibly, when I have kids one day. Yeah. Um, but yes, the acting is superb. You know, you have Ian McGregor and a bunch of other actors in here. You know, it's pretty emotional in aspects. A lot of animation films, you tend to get that anyway. So that's number eight. Coming at number seven is a movie that I find very surprising that I just watched yesterday on Disney Plus on its release down streaming service. And that is The Menu uh, with Ray Fiennes and Anya Taylor-Joy. Yes, um... This was a very good um, thriller movie because um, it's pretty much a restaurant that is just taking place on this island. And, you know, that it's bringing a bunch of, like, you know, food lovers, food critics, you know, which is just pretty much the concept of the menu. And I just thought um, they did a really good job. The acting in here is superb. Uh, Nicholas Holt is also really good. I mean... Everyone involved in the menu was generally amazing. Coming at number six, uh, we have the newest uh, Martin McDermott film, The Banshees of Inishirin, if that's how you pronounce his name. Inishirin, not Ed Sheeran, anyway. Um, but yes, he is like the new Tarantino because he really knows how to put the dialogue um, within the script and also just put out into the movie like I've seen every single um, Martin McDermott movie you know in Bruges uh, Seven Psychopaths uh, Three Billboards Outside Edmond, Missouri are all excellent films along with this film fan Jesus of Inner Sheeran um, you know all the acting is superb I love how it went to a a hit hard dark comedy to a hit hard dark drama you know this film to say the least is very reflective with regards to its uh, genres that are involved in this movie so uh, we are getting down to the almost at the nitty gritty going straight into the top five so coming at number five we have a film from a series which is probably going to be the biggest um, mystery film franchise, to say the least. Glass Onion and Knives Out Story. This film, to say the least, was just so good. I mean, some people prefer the original. I myself might prefer this one slightly more. Because the, the original Knives Out film, yes, that has a bigger cast. And I do agree with that. With Glass Onion... It's pretty much a straight out adventure movie. You know, they're going to this location uh, in Glass Onion. 
you know, there's so much more to it. Um, you get uh, to see much more of Daniel Craig's character, Blanc, who is like his new signature role character. Like, you know, his voice is just amazing. I mean, which bugged some people in the first Knives Out movie. Um, but I love his voice. It does not get old. It is so good. And so, coming at number four, going back to Anya Taylor-Joy, The Northman, uh, one of the uh, best uh, historical epics in uh, recent memory. Um, this is a Viking uh, movie, to say the least. Um, you know, with, um, with films like Gladiator, Ben-Hur, we've had, like, uh, The Roman, you know, and uh, Braveheart, we had, like, Knight, so what have you, with the Northmen, we have Vikings, you know, and then of course with Saber Pride Run, you have like the war and all, but this is a straight up Viking movie, and um, yeah, it's from um, L Northern Ireland, made in Northern Ireland where I am living in currently, but the Northmen um, has very heart hitting uh, score soundtrack. And the acting is well superb, and it is a beautiful looking movie. It is well shot. So guys, we are getting into the top three. Yes, this is where we are getting to the nitty gritty. So coming at number three was a movie that I reviewed that got probably the most views on any movie review I've done on my channel. RRR. Yes, RRR has probably the best dynamic um, duo uh, between uh, each other of the year in 2022 like these two main leads rock in this movie like from dancing scenes to action scenes to kills like RRR is fucking bonkers to say the least and it's a movie that yes it's three hours long but as you get into the action, and it also has some drama as you get invested, it flows by. Just like with the next film on the list. And coming at number two, we have which was my most anticipated film of um, 2022. And probably a lot of people's, most people. And probably my most all-time anticipated movie uh, in general before even coming out. And that is... The Batman and Vengeance. Yes. Uh, Robert Patterson, say what you want. Twilight is finished, okay? Thank you. He's so good as Batman and Bruce Wayne. He's playing three different characters. You, you know, there's Bruce Wayne, who's just Bruce Wayne. There's Bruce Wayne, who is very broken. You know, still, um, you know, because he's in his second year as Batman. Then, of course, you have the Batman himself. Um, the villains are great, you know. Um, you know, Jake Dano is the Rid... Low is creepy as hell, to say the least. Um, you know, Danny... De no, not Danny DeVille. Colin Favreau, sorry. Who also appeared in Banshees of Inishirin. Colin Favreau's The Penguin, um, with the makeup so unrecognisable, just, but so good. And Zoe Krauts, if that's how you pronounce her name, who plays a uh, Catwoman in this movie. She's excellent in this movie. Just, you know, although this next to neck with The Dark Knight... With regards to Batman films, this is probably the best Batman movie out there for Batman because this feels like an adaptation of the animated series and also the Arkham game series. And may uh, Kevin Conroy rest in peace. But Robert Patterson, you have a good way to go and I look forward to see what you do next and M Matt Reeves. So... Coming at number one, um, yeah, you can call me whatever you want, a fanboy, whatever. 
Um, not only does this film feel like a love letter to movies in general, a tribute to movies in general, but it is a type of movie <clears throat> they just don't seem to make anymore. But until it made so much money at the box office, it truly succeeded. Number one, Morbius. You know, uh, from the same line as uh, Venom, I'm bringing a Spider-Man villain in there. I am of course joking guys, Venom didn't make that much money, for good reason too, I am of course joking. My real number one of 2022 is Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick is the type of movie you just don't get to see anymore, you know, because one reason, there are no visual effects, they are practical effects. Something that we never saw in a movie for a long time. And it succeeded. And then some. Just Tom Cruise is 60. Like, he's still going on. Like, it's going to hard, be hard to tell, you know, what he's going to do straight after the Mission Impossible films. Because 7 and 8 are part 1 and 2. And it's going to be the last Mission Impossible film. Sailor Lee with Tom Cruise. It's just going to be insane, you know, um, what he's going to do um, in life with acting after when he's finished with the Mission Impossible series. And the other acting cast here is so good. Miles Teller. Oh my God, he's so good. You know, trying to make his father proud and, and seeing uh, the amount of screen time that Val Kumar had uh, was just so good. You know, with the first film, even though I did give it a positive review, it doesn't have really a lot of character development, which I will say for the first Top Gun movie with Top Gun Maverick, it's on a whole other level. It's just, you know, it's so good. You know, it makes you feel as if you are watching a classic movie over and over again. And Top Gun Maverick is my number one film of 2022. So there you go guys, that was my uh, best films for 2022. Because this film, this video, sorry, is called the best films of 2022, doesn't mean they technically are, it's just a video from me, you know? It's my opinion and I would love to see your opinion, I'd love to see whatever number list of movies you have in the comments below, and I'm very interested to see what they are in the comments down below. Well guys, I look forward to a um, 2023, you know, I am hopefully going to finish college and move into a job uh, this year and also hopefully see as much movies as possible and also try to bring some classic reviews from time to time because they're my favourite type of videos to make. And I'll also do some movies related to something that comes out as well. But as always, um, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, share this video and notify that bell before you leave. And as always, guys, until my next video, I shall see you then and peace.